Kia ora and welcome to the Radioactive 88.6 Orcon Live Room. Today we are joined by Mayali Manzanza. How are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. We're so blessed to have you here. Would you like to just do a quick intro for the listeners out there? Who have we got in the room? For sure. So on the bass, we have the one and only Johnny Lawrence. And on the keys, we have the one and only Leonardo Cogini and then myself on the... Drums. On the drums, the one and only again, Mayale Manzanza. For those of you out there, you can go to our Facebook page, radioactive.fm, and live stream this on Facebook. You can see all the action for yourself right from home. Mm. I have to say, um, the lighting guy has done a pretty got a pretty nice setup in here. Oh, so if shout you out to Jesse, we yeah. love you. So if you can get on the live stream, it might be a nice sort of full sensory experience you get the full on experience there. Full experience, yeah. you can see it definitely. So we're here to talk about your new album. It was released on January June. June 28th, not mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. So I think um, without getting too much into it straight away, we should just hear a song. For sure. Okay, well, um, let's start off with the track that starts off the album. This is a piece called Ritual.
That was amazing. I'm literally speechless. Literally speechless. <laughs> that was so, oh, that was so good. It's a musical experience going on. In oh my god! Thank you. Yeah, it's a good, it's good energy in this room. It's small, fabulous energy. But it's um, yeah. Very condensed. Condensed, good, yeah. compressed. Passionate. Love it. Lots of fire. <laughs> so that track was called <laughs> Ritual. Yeah, that's right. And Ritual. it's from your new album, which is called A Love Requited. Mm -hmm. Out June twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the album because it is said to be quite different from your other albums. Yeah, so I think with, with this record, um, there's a few things going on here. Like, firstly, my first album, One, was definitely Mayali, the beat maker, producer guy. Mm -hmm. My second album, which is called 1.1, was like Mayali, the drummer, band leader. A love requited, if anything, is really Mayali, the composer. I mean, and yes, there is drumming, and yes, there is this influence of hip-hop and electronic music that sort of seeps in there, mm -hmm. but it's like really... Um, a lot more effort was given to the actual writing and the composition. And also, I guess, trying to find some sense of meaning within the process of writing the right. music beyond just mere, um, here's good music played by good musicians, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So with a piece like Ritual, is um, there's, a, there's a deliberate kind of aggressiveness, a deliberate kind of um, discordant energy in there, a deliberate kind of... Um, yeah, it's very punchy. Yeah, and there's a sort of like, like it's like harmonically it's pretty simple. It sort of stays on E minor the whole way, but with that just staying in one place, there's room for real sorts of energy and friction and kind of um, the the burning fire type thing to kind of occur there. And and that that was like a deliberate choice because there was something in the in the scheme of the whole album I wanted to convey the sense of like darkness and, and anger really like the sense of like really inward looking anger look at all this raw like stuff that I do not like about myself and I'm angry about it and it's just like the piece in a sense is like a way of expressing that um trying to be as honest as I can with the sense that like the, uh, there's a, there are these dark parts that I have and that we all have that we may not be that comfortable with but really just sort of leaning into into that energy and um Using that, using the music as a constructive way to kind of um, mm. voice that and work through that, and across the course of the album, that's like there's like this range of sort of um, deliberate emotional choices or pieces which might be a bit more about family or about struggles around relationships or struggles around like my my even my decision to be a musician as a as a career and like my relationship to that. Um, career choice and that sort of sense of self identity yeah. around what being a musician it's a very is deeply emotional personal creative work yeah yeah it's a it's very much a um an internal inward work as opposed to say like a political album like this album not not that I'm avoiding politics but for this album I'm explicitly focused on an internal uh accounting of the soul I guess yeah. and um reflective very self reflective I feel mm. like that can bring out the best in people yeah I think so I think so the yeah. best in your music. And you uh, mentioned that this is the uh, first album as a composer. Well, well, it's, well not it's, it's not the first album as a composer, but it's the first one where I'm... That's the real focus and probably yeah. took more time with the writing and the arranging and um, thinking about the structure of the album as a, as a whole as opposed to here's a dope tune, here's a dope tune, here's a dope tune, here's ten dope tunes. <laughs> awesome. Kind of yeah. Can you paint us a little picture of what your composition process is like when uh, you're writing music? Um, well... I guess yeah. like it was it was mostly it was very piano driven so um okay. a lot of the music started with me just actually getting away from the drums and just sitting at a piano and my my piano skills aren't very good like Leo would burn me by a million miles <laughs> and and my knowledge of theory isn't really all that hot either but in a way and and um Johnny and uh Leo you can chip in here if you like I think that because I don't have this deep sense of theory in my knowledge base, when it comes to writing music, I'm just sort of like, here's a sound, I like the sound. If I go from this sound to the next sound, that feels intuitively right, so I'm going to do that. As opposed to music theory dictates I should move to the from the two right. to the five to the, or whatever, you know. So I don't, my, my yeah. skills around the actual theory behind my stuff isn't that hot, but... I like to think that it means that I just sort of go from this intuitive sense of like, I like this sound and I like that sound. And it sort of gradually, slowly but surely hacks away into something which is somewhat my own, if, 
even though I'm drawing from lots of influences, obviously. Awesome. Yeah. Very much love that. And it's co-produced by Ross McHenry? Yeah, that's right. So Ross McHenry, he's a fantastic um, bass player, composer in his own right, who's based out of Adelaide in Australia. And um, I've been working with him on several projects over the last decade, really. And um, he, he was really good in the sense of, like, like, he was a good, like, sort of executive producer in terms of, like, here are the logistics. Uh, he's, here's the group of musicians that we want to work with. Um, where can we get money to kind of put it all together? As well as, like, when we're in the studio kind of thinking, like, okay, what is the sound that we're going for? What are the references? Uh, what sort of microphones do we need to use? What sort of instrumentation do we need to use to sort of get to this goal of what the album was? So he was really great in that sense of someone who... Whilst it was my, essentially my vision, he was really good at like, okay, here's the steps that we need to do to execute that and um, bring it all together. So he was a really yeah. fantastic partner in crime to work he with. He does in that sound respect. like, yeah, very good person to work with. Yeah. So I love Requited. Mm -hmm. Have you got another track for us? Yes, we do. Um, so this next piece is called Itaru's Phone Booth. And um, let, let's play it and then I'll, I'll give you the, the story behind it um, Sounds good. afterwards. But yeah, Sounds Itaru's good. Phone Booth. Thank you. 
My Ale Manzanza Trio, everybody. For those of you who have just tuned in, that track was called Itaru's Phone Booth. Thank you. And oh, yeah, I'm going tell you, you the story, story right? about, yeah, I got the story. about the phone booth. Yeah, okay, yeah. so um, there was this episode of a really fairly popular podcast called This American Life, which I was listening to on a as I do. And um, there was a story about this guy called Itaru who lived in a village in Japan and he had this phone booth which he just built on his um, property as a place to go and have a conversation, um, so to speak, with, uh, off memory, I think it might have been his deceased wife or something like that. It was just this nice space where he would go and sort of have, you know, expose his, you know, or just pretend to talk to, or, you know, pretend, you know, who am I to say? But mm -hmm. he had this, this place to go and sort of memorialise his wife. And um, when, I think in 2011, there was that massive tsunami which came and hit Japan and there was like the whole issue around the nuclear fallout and that kind of stuff. But this village um, got pretty cl a good chunk of its population taken out by the tsunami and the phone booth became the place where the whole village could kind of congregate and um, have their sort of space to talk with the people who passed away. So... Um, whether that was maybe some kids who were just at school and they were telling their mum that, oh, I'm doing my homework and I made the soccer team and blah, 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 through to, you know, wives whose husbands had passed away and they just wanted to tell them that they loved them and they were sorry for not telling them that while they were here. And for me, this phone booth idea was this a fairly beautiful poetic image to sort of centre a piece around. And in my personal life, I guess it made me kind of reflect on what is it that I would want to say to the people that are in my life that I haven't said? Um, what is it that I want to say to people in my life who aren't here? Um, and just ref just as a an idea to reflect on was that. And so the piece sort of centers around that idea loosely. And um, if, if maybe for those of you who are listening, maybe it's just a nice piece of music or maybe there is something that you could... Th that is something you could think about in terms of like these people who I love, do I tell them that I love them? Or this person who has hurt me, do I tell them that they've hurt me? Or um, And just, think, just things are on that nature that I think we all have as people, but um, maybe we don't all have the courage or willingness to talk about or um, to really bring that up because it's, you know, it's heavy stuff. It's like the stuff which is, like even as I'm talking about it, things are coming to my mind which are making me feel uncomfortable and I'm kind of stuttering and blabbering a bit. Um, but it's all this relatively real common thing that we all have and um, I thought that was a nice idea to write some music about. Yeah, it's a beautiful but sentiment. Thank you mm. for sharing that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so let's talk about your upcoming tour. Mm -hmm. um, so you're playing in Wellington on Friday and Saturday, July 12th and 13th. Yes, that's right. Yes, at Tuatara, the third eye. Yeah, that's right, which is 30 Arthur Street, which is kind of corner of Cuba and Arthur, more or less. Yeah, yeah, um, down that little oops, yeah. alleyway. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's going to be a really exciting couple of concerts and a really exciting tour as well. So um, Johnny, who's playing bass with us, will be uh, on the road as long as, as well as the wonderful Jonathan Crayford on piano, who, um, uh, TUI award winning, uh, everyone knows who he is, he's <laughs> the... He's the he's that guy. And he's um, that guy. Yeah, but Leo's also that guy too. But Leo Leo's that future guy. <laughs> Leo's pretty good. Leo's we'll like that. the <laughs> Leo's like the the top guy under thirty, and Jonathan's like the OG guy. Right. Yeah. Awesome. But it's gonna be, gonna be a really exciting. That's show. That's gonna be an excite a very exciting show exactly. Mm. So listeners, go and get your tickets. You can find them on Event Finder for I think from memory twenty five dollars. No, it's um twenty plus booking fee. So no twenty plus booking fee. Yeah. That's a steal. Yeah. That's a steal. Go yeah. and grab your ticket right now. Event finder. My early man's answer trio. Perfect. Um is there anything else? Um, how is how much time do we have left? How much time do we have left? That's a good question. It's four o'clock. It's four o'clock. Do we have do we is it like a, a hard wrap at four? One more song? We can do one, one more? One more song. We've got cheering okay. from the studio. One more song. Okay, awesome. One more song. All right, well, let's play um, Big Deal, which is another tune off of The Love Requited, which is available now from Bandcamp and uh, all your streamy things, your streamy as well things. as uh, the good the good folks at Radioactive who are playing that music and having us be a place awesome. to share it. And right. quick shout out to Orcon for sponsoring our live room and big thanks to New Zealand On Air. All right, here we go. Big Deal.
Thank you once again. Uh, Johnny Lawrence on bass, Leonardo Cagini on keys, Miley Menzenza on drums. I love required it out now. Wellington can check us out. Uh, 12th and 13th of July at the Third Eye Tickets via Event Finder. Peace!